Hey, it's Jackie, and welcome back to my channel for another nostalgic makeup tutorial. I had so much fun with my previous upload, which was a 2014 aesthetic Victoria's Secret Angel look with nostalgic products. So that's what we're doing today, except with the 2016 King Kylie era. I never did my makeup like this, and I was making makeup content, so it was really fun to go back and do an inspired look. This isn't quite a transformation. I've done a Kylie and Kendall transformation before on my channel, but this is kind of like what could have been if I was a baddie back in 2016. Since this look is very much more is more, skin prep is super important and I'm really excited to be working with Delba on today's video. Delba has the number one best-selling face mist on Amazon, so I'm sure you've seen this beautiful vegan skincare product before. I've rebought both the Delba White Truffle First Spray Serum and the White Truffle Double Serum and Cream on Amazon so easily and I love them. As we apply, you can see the serum and oil instantly leaving a refreshing, glowing look. Always shake before you use it. Now that I'm all glowy, a little bit about the product. The main ingredient is premium white truffles extracted from Piedmont, Italy. White truffle is a luxury antioxidant to improve skin elasticity and smooth fine lines. Just look at my truffle glow. Let me know if you've tried this viral serum spray in the comments. I keep on grabbing for it and I love the way it smells. Like I've tried so many skincare products and if I don't like the smell of something, even if it's doing its job, I just stop using it. So it's a huge plus that I love how this smells. The overall skin looks quite even because I do have a self tan on right now. So I would totally wear this over top of just some self tanner. I think it looks really nice. But today we're gonna go pretty full coverage and I don't wanna look cakey. So being really hydrated is great if you're going for a matte look as well. And let's go in with a matte primer. And this is when we're gonna get into some nostalgic products that are still amazing today. For foundation, let's go very matte and high coverage. You can keep it authentic with a stippling brush or a beauty blender. Here's the L'Oreal Pro Matte Foundation. I picked the shade Sun Beige. Estee Lauder Double Wear or Too Faced Born This Way foundations are also great higher end picks that were super popular at the time. I definitely used more drugstore products in 2016, so I have some good drugstore picks for this video that I remember loving. This foundation's a little dark, but once we apply the very bright highlighter, It'll work out, I think. I never do my makeup like this, so this is kind of experimenting, but I have put a lot of thought into it. You could go for a beauty blender, and those have been around since like 2005. They initially launched in Victoria's Secret, if you didn't know, which totally makes sense with all the pink. Touching up with this e.l.f. one. It's not quite as squishy. But for concealer, let's do brows, and I've literally never done the ombre dip brow situation, so this is my first attempt, but I got the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade, and I got it in granite. Granite? Granite. This is me trying a completely different style. Let's keep it soft at the head of the brow. These are looking rough. I've seen a lot of tutorials on how to do dip brows, but I just have a lot of natural like stray brows that I don't want to pluck, so it's not going quite as well. But we're gonna work with it. Hopefully when I can see it'll kind of snatch them. Let's use the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. And Kylie just posted a throwback tutorial like of a 2017 makeup look, and she showed where she likes to highlight, so I'm just copying that. This is a super light concealer. Sometimes Kylie would use more of a yellow tone, but I think once it's blended out, it'll do the job. Why did blending this out take so long? I really do prefer the Maybelline Magic Eraser Concealer. This one is amazing. It's so much easier to blend out. I added this for some extra brightness right here. And I was like, I wish I just went and used this the whole time. I don't think I'm completely done with the brows, but they are looking better after a bit of concealer. Blending out and before powder, I'm gonna lock in a bit more moisture again with the Dalbo White Truffle for Spray Serum. The top layer has plant-derived oils to lock in moisture for glowy skin, while the White Truffle Serum at the bottom provides intensified elasticity and anti-aging properties. You don't have to worry about the oils separating your makeup because it's such a fine mist. You can use this at any point in your makeup routine, whether that's before, during, and I'm gonna use it to set as well. So thank you to Delva for working with me on today's video. Obviously I'm not done yet, but if you do wanna check out this product, it is linked down below. You can find it on Amazon. 
I'm not super confident with the dip brow and the baking, so I used a Painted by Spencer tutorial, and he recommended to use a little bit of the Maybelline um, Age Rewind Concealer in the inner corner, and it worked amazing. And then before going in with a ton of powder, go with a translucent powder, and then only a tiny bit, and set the under eye before going in with the baking powder. I'll have Spencer's tutorial linked. It's a little masterclass, it's amazing. I think things are turning out pretty good. Benefit Hoola Bronzer is great for bronzing and contouring and I love that it's a matte formula. If this shade doesn't work for you, they also have Hoola Caramel and Hoola Light. And if that's not in your range as well, then the Fenty Contour Sticks have like an amazing range. Back to baking, Makeup by Spencer recommended the Ben Nye Fair Translucent Powder. And we did the bronzer first so we can go in and clean it up. This feels so weird to me because I always finish a step. Like I don't like doing my um, eyes before my base. I always like to start with my base, which I know not everybody likes to do it like that. Maybe I will wipe it off. I can't, I can't handle it. It does look very Photoshopped. Initially, I wasn't gonna do like a Kylie Jenner tutorial specifically, but she just really captures the vibe, so it's ending up that way. Blush, I was looking at some blogs that were posted in 2016, and this ombre blush came up a lot. Ombre was such a big thing, wasn't it? So I'm gonna add a touch of this. Can't forget highlight, of course, Becca's Champagne Pop broke the internet. You could also go with ColourPop's Super Shock highlighters. I love the texture of those. I'm having fun with this fan brush. I don't think Kylie went overboard with highlight. A lot of, um, well, no, a couple really like big makeup artists in 2016 definitely took the glow to a whole nother level. So if you love to do that, go for it. Finally, for the eyes, Urban Decay Primer Potion. If you can tell, I also have a plumping lip gloss on. This is the Lawless Forget the Filler. If you see my nails, they look really disgusting because I have the L'Oreal Root Touch-Up Spray in my hair so that it looks a lot darker. I am wearing a wig, but the front is my own hair and it keeps getting in my nails every time I touch my hair, so ignore. There are so many amazing looks that we could pull from from 2016, like a glitter cut crease, but the palette that I chose is the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette. I went to the launch party in LA and I think I was the only Canadian there, at least that I knew of. And yeah, there was a lot of really big creators there. Some were friendly, some were not. But anyways, this palette still remains very sentimental. I absolutely love it. And you can still get it new. It is available, they haven't discontinued it, but I'm gonna use colors that are very similar from this palette from the drugstore. Again, this is e.l.f. I'll match the shades as best as I can, but it still smells good. Starting with some warmth in the crease. Even warmer brown underneath the lash line smoked out. Just see how much more smoldering this eye looks compared to when I kept the lid really bright. Bright highlight right underneath the brow bone. It's getting into some of my brow hairs. Wanna keep it soft and blended added some slightly darker contacts. And when I was learning to do winged liner, this was my go-to. It's the Sephora brand liner. I also really liked the um, MAC Brushstroke liner. I bought both of those so many times, but I've seen mixed reviews about the Brushstroke liner actually, but I found it really easy. I recommended it a lot. So hopefully if anyone bought it because of me, you also liked it. We're just doing a soft wing and then let's smoke up the edges like Kylie. She focused more on bold lashes rather than winged liner. Smoking out with a dark brown. I'm not really doing like a complex cut crease because this is gonna focus a little bit more on the lips. Go with a mascara that suits your lash type. I'm trying out this MAC one. This is Black Stack Mascara. I've never tried this. I was sent this and really wanted to give it a go, but a nostalgic pick would be the Roller Lash by Benefit. I love that one. And then Too Faced Better Than Sex is great if you already have long lashes. I find, for me, I like using Better Than Sex over top of falsies. This mascara is pretty wet, so I'm gonna let that dry. Yeah, it's still, still wet. I'm gonna add some big falsies, but I'll do the first lip combo. I'm gonna go for something very gray. That's super 2016 to me. So I'm starting with Stone Lip Pencil 
from MAC and the shape is going to be overlined at the top, especially uh, right through here in the cupid's bow. Ah, this is screaming 2016. Okay. Sadly, the gray shade used to be a lip kit, but it's no longer available. So I found another nostalgic brand. Do you guys remember Gerard Cosmetics? That is a throwback. But I got this one and let's see how this looks. This is the shade Invasion. Let's make this more dramatic with big false lashes. Kylie said she used to get bold lash extensions, but we're gonna do the like faux mink route because that was really popular. <gasps> those are a little too big. Do I like those? I don't know. <laughs> okay, I think that's better. I feel like my makeup could use a little refresh at this point. I'm spraying with the Dalva spray one more time, which can double as a setting spray. I love that this mist comes out so fine. Like sometimes with my Urban Decay um, setting spray, I'll get droplets if I don't clean the nozzle and then it kind of directs makeup. So I'm loving how this is looking and I do have another lip combo to show you. I'm running out of natural light, so hopefully it's not too dark, but I can't do a Kylie inspired look without Kylie lip kit. So this one is Posy K and I'm gonna add this to the center. Looks really pretty. Ooh. It's still not dry yet, but I don't find these all that drying. Maybe I just always make sure to prep my lips with like a lip mask, but I like them. The last lip combo, it took quite a few layers, but this is the Stay Matte Liquid Lip in Rosetto Liquido. And it looks really cool. This is like a that unapproachable makeup trend. Honestly, I'm way cooler like this. Should I just sw totally switch aesthetics and just be this all the time? <laughs> You'll have to let me know which lip combo was your favorite, if you liked this tutorial and what you'd like to see next. If you wanna keep on watching, you might remember the Dalba products from the Doyen Makeup Transformation. You can check that video out. It's a really great skincare step if you're looking for hydration and the Doyen makeup is super fun to try. And comment down below if you have any makeup favorites from this time. If you yourself wore makeup like this, were you Kylie inspired? And if you want to watch another nostalgic video, check out the Victoria's Secret 2014 makeup look.